Okay, we are going to oh. start off today with a woman who uh, who took a huge gamble to follow her dream. Trisha Rossi Burt spent, uh, I'm sorry, Trisha Rose Burt spent years working in the corporate world, but then she left to uh, explore her inner artist. Yes, after 15 years as a visual artist, she now has a one-woman show called I Will Be Good. In it, she takes us on her adventure as she transforms from a southern businesswoman to a contemporary New England artist. She also reveals details from her upcoming um, or her upbringing. Yes, yeah. she does. Take a look. It was not appropriate to flaunt or even mention sex, sexuality, or basic bodily functions. Her friend, Mrs. Huntley, is still unable to say the words period or pregnant. Instead, she mouths the words and gestures. <laughs> Darling, we were so glad that Nancy had her <laughs> because we were so afraid that she was going to be <laughs> Welcome, Trisha. Good to have you here. Thank you. It's really great to be here. That takes a lot of guts to get up there and do a one-person show all by yourself in front of hundreds, thousands of people. Well, you know, it, it, it takes more guts not to do it. I'm just sort of, you know, it's the right thing for me to do as an artist. You know, I, right. I feel very comfortable in front of audiences. And, and I've been trying to tell this story with my visual work for about... A long time 12 or 13 years and then I thought I'm just using the wrong medium mm -hmm. I really need to shift medium and start using performance to tell the story and so it's it's a really good fit for me let's really go good. back into your history a little bit what was the uh, when you were in the corporate world what were you doing then I was in public relations oh, really? okay. all right so <laughs> not afraid of people, people like you <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah poor thing that's why <laughs> <you got laughs> no, no, no. did you have any formal acting training any on stage uh, training in your, no, in your past you know I mean my family is you know how each family sort of has a certain Everybody's an athlete, everybody's a scientist, everybody's in my family, everyone tells a story. We're just good storytellers. And so I've been telling stories for a really long time. And so I just sort of officialized it, you know, formalized it a little bit to tell this one. Did you come from, from a family? No, um, mother, father, daddy's gone now, but mother, father, and a brother and sister. So, okay. you know, but that was sort of, you know, that's how you, how we exchanged information. And we also had some, um, you know, my parents got divorced. There's some some big things that happened in my growing up, and the way we dealt with it was through humor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's you know, give us give us a tragedy, we'll turn it into something funny <laughs> pretty quick. So. Well, I was wondering, what do you deal with in the show? I hear it's a lot of humor, but there's also some tears as well. Like it's you, you run the gamut of emotion throughout. Yeah, I mean, it's ninety. Well, I say it's ninety percent funny, ten percent heartbreaking, mm -hmm. which is not a bad balance. No. You know? Right. And I basically, I mean, the story is ostensibly about me being, you know, raised to be a very good gather, a southern girl, raised to be in business and then get married and mm -hmm. things sort of careening out of control and me becoming a contemporary artist living up north. And it it talks a lot about how we make our life choices and and those things, you know, are we making the choices or are they being made for us? Mm -hmm. So I have this one segment of the show where I talk about the shoulds of growing up and I have this list of about 30 shoulds. You know, I mm -hmm. should be appropriate, I should act like a lady, I should, you know, go to church, I should just, just keep mm -hmm. going, I should not show signs of aging, all these things. And when people see the, that portion of it, they all just start nodding their heads mm -hmm. because everyone has them. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody has their set of shoulds. Mm -hmm. and, and so... I, it's really talking about, you know, which ones do you want to keep and which ones do you want to let go of mm -hmm. and really try to find an authentic life. There are a lot of people out there, I'm sure, that are empathizing with that same situation in their lives right now, particularly as they approach their, their midlife. They're going, okay, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Is this mm -hmm. what I want to keep doing? <laughs> or should I do this, 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 and this? And what are the repercussions of this, 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 exactly. and this? Exactly. And, and so how do you, how do you sort out moving forward or taking that leap or I mean, not? For me, it was just kind of, um, I mean, it was this sort of blend of being practical and the creative side of me. I mean, I sort of reached a point um, in my life of this is when I left public relations, I was really not happy, you know, and I thought this is just, this isn't good to not no. be happy right now. And so what do I do? And so I sort of reassessed and explored and took classes and what do I want to go and what do I want to do? And I ended up in art school. I mean, the show is based about me going to go see a career counselor who tells me I should be an artist. And I'm like, you've lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're lawyers or we're business people. We're not artists. And I end up going to art school and it's, you know, exactly the right fit because nobody fits in an art school. And that's the point, you know, and sure. trying to really be yourself at that point. Did your whole family support your decision? 
decision to leave the corporate world and go to art school? Well, I, it was hard because, I mean, I think there's that concern of, you know, how are they going to, how is she going to support herself and what's she going to do? And it was such a 180 for what? What about health insurance? Oh, yeah. I mean, the real practical things start kicking in. And, um, you know, for me, it was like... It, you sort of have to start listening to your soul as opposed to, you know, is it fiscally responsible? Because it probably wasn't the best decision I ever did fiscally, but right. as far as leading an authentic life, absolutely. And the rest of it begins to catch up. And but. your happiness factor now compared to 10 years ago? Way up. <laughs> way, way, way up. But, you know, and I think even right now for people, everybody's having to reassess yeah. so much with the economy and what's going on and how they make their decisions. It's really relevant. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, I think the more specific you get, the more universal it becomes. Oh. And so there's a lot of people who can really relate to it. I am sure. Wow. And really quickly, do you, does your family like the show? They've all read the script. <laughs> okay. We're all good. No, all right, no surprises good. for anybody. <laughs> no surprises for anybody. Patricia right. Rose Burt, thank you thank very you. much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And Trisha, Trisha's next show will be out in Tampa tonight, uh, but you can check out where she's headed next. And to get more information about Trisha, you can go to our website, daytimeonline.tv, and click I apologize, I've called you Patricia and Rossi, and because we have Patricia <laughs> Rossi coming up later on the show. And, and she's, she's lovely, our, I've met isn't her. Isn't she great? She's one of our regular guests. She'll be coming up later, and we're also making Black Bottom Pie a la Southern Living, so stay with us.